Howdy everyone. Hey everybody, welcome back. So on this vlog, we're gonna be going over our six month review of living in this truck camper. But we're gonna start out with how much we have fallen in love with the Ford F-350. Let me tell you something, she's a beast. So if you've been with us for a while on the channel, you know we had an 06 Hummer H3 prior to this. We loved that thing, but we didn't realize that it didn't have a lot of power. Actually, we knew it didn't have oh, a lot of power. Oh, we realized it didn't have power <laughs> real quick. <laughs> Starting out though, one of the greatest things that we have fallen in love with this is the clearance. This has so much clearance, and this is the reason we bought this Ford F350. There's other reasons too, but clearance and four-wheel drive is one of them. A second reason that we loved it is our Hummer did have four-wheel drive, of course. Why would you have a Hummer H3 that was a two-wheel drive? They don't even make them. But this one had rear lockers. On four-wheel drives, you always have only one tire in the front and one tire in the back pulling at all times. But with these lockers, both tires pull at the same time, which prevents us from being stuck as easily. And the third thing that we love about this truck is the fact that we went with a crew cab. The reason we wanted to go with this, and it has worked out great for us, is all the storage in the back. We live out of this full time, so we're able to carry everything we've always wanted, including our workout equipment in Kelly's lounger, which was a big one. We were concerned that going with a truck camper, we wouldn't be able to have this much available space, and we did. Oh yeah, I can't live without my lounger. That's my outside relaxation. But we haven't had any issues with the truck at all. We've been able to get everywhere we wanted to go with the camper on top. We've gotten to a lot of our old school places we like to camp in Arkansas, and we've put ourselves in some situations out here in the desert so far where we've had to inch through things and we've made it. We haven't had any issues with clearance. When we were in Tennessee, we drove through a bunch of treed areas and we've made it pretty much through everything. Now we do have a couple of scratches on the camper but that happened within the first week that we had it we bought this stuff to use not to keep it looking pretty so everything gets used for what it is for another thing that we really like about our setup is the truck and the camper together is 23 feet long which makes it easy for us to get around town park in parking lots for grocery stores and eat restaurants anywhere else we want to go it's just all around better for us to get where we want to go and i will have to admit whenever I drove the H3 with the trailer, that was so much more stressful driving around town than this has been. I really did think with the height, it would be more stressful. And at first, because it was a mindset thing, it was pretty stressful because Kelly was always looking and still does look at bridge clearance heights. Which we haven't come up on any bridges that we can't get under. We know of one in our hometown of Texarkana and we already knew about it, so we just don't go that way. You can go around it. But as far as it's being on the road, we haven't had any issues with bridges. Now, I still get afraid that we're gonna tip over, but Cody's like, come on, Kelly, the whole truck weighs more than the camper. And then we have a 45 gallon water tank, which has been awesome. And when that is full, that's right in the center of the bed. So that just puts more weight on the back of the truck. So we're not gonna tip over, even though I still get scared and I think we're gonna tip over. I know we're not. Well, that kind of leads into uh, wind speeds. So recently we have been at some really high wind speeds with gusts of probably 50 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And it has made us a little nervous sitting still and we chose not to drive in that, but we have drove through 30 mile per hour winds coming at the side of the camper. We've had no issues. It also helps that we had an aftermarket sway bar installed. If we didn't install, and I'll show you right here, you see that bar right there, it's a thicker sway bar. If we didn't install that, I think the whole truck would sway a lot more. So all in all, it's been great. We've also enjoyed the storage, like Cody has said, in the truck, but also all the storage in the camper and the outside of the camper. So if you watched our beginning videos when we first got the truck camper, Cody and his dad did one of these storage units on the side. It was that you had this, we'll open it and show you, but it was completely empty in there. So they had to box it out to make it able for storage to fit in there. So Cody and his dad built out one box on one side and then Cody and my dad built out the box on the other side. So like I said, when they had to build the box out, you, they had to build all of this right here. It was completely empty, it was an empty cavity. And if you're wondering why was this an empty cavity to begin with, this camper is designed for a short and long bed truck. And if you have a long bed truck, the long bed will actually go further and probably come to about right here. That is why that's an empty cavity oh, and you glad. have to build it out. I'm glad we have a short bed truck. Yeah, I agree. Before we go inside, there's something that we aren't too happy with on this camper. However, Kelly's dad, who has a RV shop, told us that is very common is the gray water handle. So inside this camper, we have a black and gray water handle. This actually 
broke away from the valve door. And I had to hammer this back down into it to get it to work and our gray tank was back flowing. And what we did was go with an external valve trap door and it just screwed on directly to the outside pipe. You might be asking why are we even keeping the gray and black open together is because we've removed the toilet right here that goes up in there and we backflow this into the black tank so that we have 50 gallons of gray water versus just a 25 gallon gray water tank. Okay, once you step inside, I wanna talk about storage again. We have tons of storage in here and it has worked out perfectly. I have not rearranged anything since I organized all of these cabinets. So food pantry still here. Uh, shoes are Starlink stores in here. And then we'll talk about the rest of the storage when we get inside. So let's talk about this bathroom because we have used the shower more so than we thought we were going to. Uh, mainly just because we've been in the desert, we haven't been where there's any creeks and we can use our outdoor shower that we used prior, the Jolka system. So we've been using this quite a bit. Let's just start with the shower curtains. So I've noticed after about maybe two months shower curtains need to be washed so these are the soft shower curtains that you can wash in the washing machine and you can hang them up to dry and they dry really quickly you don't have to buy the hard plastic ones that are just really stiff i thought at the beginning i wanted to rip these out and do something different but now that we've been living in here for six months using it almost daily i think that it is great and i wouldn't want to change anything else about that so we have two shower curtains this one will block the door and then this one hides all of this stuff back here which is our dirty clothes and our shower stuff and the storage in the little cabinet has worked out perfectly as well now this we did change out this was not original it was a white stiff cord same brand as this we just got a stainless steel now we can talk about the toilet we did like we said take the toilet out and we are not missing that toilet we flow the gray and black together so that means that we have more room for dish and shower water not our waste also we are not wasting water flushing the toilet so therefore we save a little bit water to wash dishes or wash ourselves and this is just our regular camping toilet we had it before when we were in the tent and you just put a bag in there there's bags that you can buy that come with it and it has the bag has like some material that expands when your li liquid touches it you fold that in zip it up and you just dispose of it now we did replace there was a plastic piece here this is what you would put down to stand on you know, you know, once you shower, that way the floor is a little higher and you don't get your feet wet. This is just a cedar wood plank and it seems to be working out great. And it makes it smell really good in here because it smells like cedar. Another thing with this bathroom is, and this really doesn't have to do with the bathroom, it has more to do with the door. So this door, we noticed even when it would magnetically latch here, sometimes we would park and come in here and the whole door has just been slung open. My dad had this little idea that you do this in a lot of RVs. Once we have it closed, you just snap it together and that has held it closed and we don't have any issues with the door retracting at all. All right, so that kind of concludes that. Refrigerator has worked out fine. It's refrigerator and freezer. We've actually been able to keep our frozen stuff really frozen and the refrigerator stays very cool. We haven't had any issues with that. Another thing with this camper is we have this table here that is removable. And when we first started living in this, we thought we would totally be removing this table just to like hang out in here, but we don't have to remove the table to hang out in here. We still hang out in here just fine. We've just found ourselves not removing the table. There is so much more room if you remove the table. We remove it just to kind of get stuff out of storage under here, but other than that, it pretty much stays in place. We did get a cute little pillow recently, so this didn't come with the camper. We just need a little accent pillow right there to put behind your back sometimes if you're sitting here for a while, like when Cody's editing, he needs a little back support sometimes. She's right, and I'll be honest, this is not the most comfortable seating, especially for long times of editing, and that pillow has been a game changer. Sounds mm -hmm. weird that it's just a pillow, but just by itself, this is real thin foam. You go down and your butt touches the plywood almost after about 30 minutes. See, I don't see, I'm not, I don't think I'm as heavy as you. Oh, so I'm my butt heavy. doesn't touch the plywood, but I think that next time we roll into our hometown, my dad knows somebody there. All we have to do is we have to have time to take these cushions to this upholstery place and he can replace the inside foam with something stiffer, maybe like a very, very firm 
foam and I think that that would fix the issue. Oh yeah, it would. So we'll talk about the storage again. We've had this, all this storage. I have not moved anything. It has worked out perfectly fine. Our utensils have worked out fine. The storage under here, I've kind of kept it as, as it was originally. The oven has worked great, by the way. A lot of people said, hey, you need to get you one of these stone things to put at the bottom to help regulate the heat. And that stays in there. It doesn't go anywhere and it works out great. The stove top has worked really good as well. Haven't had any issues with it. It is very, very worn. I mean, we have used the heck out of it. And then Cody's dad built this little wooden I'm gonna just call it extra counter space because I don't use it as a cutting board. I just use it more when I dry dishes, I put them here, or if I need extra room to prep food, it's just great to have. And it's worked out great. It doesn't move because he's got these little wood slits that go in here. So when we're driving, it stays here as well. And if you wanna have a place to stand up and work for a little bit, it's really nice to put a laptop right and here and you can just stand and- It's like the perfect height. So if I'm doing work on my laptop, I'm he's usually sitting and I usually stand over here and do a little bit of work. Now we have somebody, had somebody ask if we missed the microwave. So we completely ripped out the microwave, made this aftermarket cabinet here out of old RV door and painted it, which I'm still not happy with the color of the paint. I just, maybe next year when we go home uh, to my parents, I can find a different paint color. Or if we get bored on the road and somebody has chalk paint, which this is the brand of that paint, it's called chalk paint, which means you don't have to sand prep or anything like that before you paint it. A lot of people use it for antique furniture or furniture that has the particle board sticker on top of it. People will use it for that. So no, we have not missed the microwave. When we had a house, we never used the microwave. So I thought it would be better to have more storage and it has worked out great. So all the spices and oils, I've got some coffee back there, pretty much stay up here. Haven't had an issue with this thing moving. It's pretty heavy with seasoning. I think the only great. thing at home we ever used the microwave for was to melt butter. I melted butter for that popcorn because I would make air pop popcorn and that was it. And I wanted to talk about one other thing. If you have a microwave, you have to be hooked up to shore power. Mm -hmm. Well, we're hardly ever hooked up to shore power, but right. that leads me to this AC unit. I didn't really think we would use this AC unit Kind of joked about removing yeah, it. Yeah, we thought about putting another extra weight. <laughs> that and putting a, another Max Air fan in here. Oh yeah. And we left it, and when we were down in Key West, we used this thing a lot because it was mm -hmm. hot down there in December, still hot and humid. And you have to be hooked up to shore power for this as well. Worked out great. So we're kind of looking forward to it because last year we were trying to escape the heat. Mm -hmm. Well, this this go around this summer coming up, if we're in a hot area, we might be able to get it just a campground and hook up to shore power and not have to drive 15, 20 hours across the country from we one spot to the other. We might actually be able to go swimming this summer. Yeah. Because <laughs> we both love being in the water and we like warm temperatures. So this will allow us, yes, we will have to stay in a campground, but it is so much easier to stay in a campground now than in a tent. You're in your own little domicile and you have your own privacy and it's just so much easier. So we are happy that we did opt to have the air conditioner. Now we can talk about the Max Air Fan. The reason we th thought about putting one here is because when it is a little warm outside, especially in the evening when the sun has set, if you open all these windows and you turn on that Max Air Fan, there's so much breeze that comes through here. It cools it off, I wanna say at least 10 degrees cooler than what it is outside. So that is why we thought about just taking this off and putting the max air fan. But when you're somewhere where it's very humid, it's nice just to have that dry, little bit of a dry air, especially to dry things in here like towels and stuff like that. Speaking of air, we'll talk about heat. So this does have a furnace here. Um, a lot of people have talked about replacing the thermostat because you it's not perfect on temperature, but you can just kind of gauge it with your eye and it works out great for us. We haven't had any issues with the furnace. It keeps it very warm in here. The only thing is, is at night, if it's gonna be below 40, we do have to bump it down to in between the 50 and 60 degree mark here. So I just kind of gauge it like that. It's off right now. So we'll bump it up maybe to in between these two because if it's any higher than that, it will consistently kick on and off, kick on and off, kick on and off. And we're asleep anyway under all our blankets, so it's just nice just to have it kick on 
every now and then. And we're used to cold temperatures living in a tent for a year and a half. So yeah. being warm and cozy in a bed was never an issue when we were in the tent. It's getting up. That's yeah. the issue. So now we can get up, turn the heat up, get back in bed real quick. And then when it warms up, then we can slowly get out of bed. And she always That's looks at nice. me. She goes, I'm ready to get up. Will you turn on the heat? <laughs> Speaking of the furnace, here is the furnace. This old bad boy right here. It just, it's a beast. It is loud though. It will wake you up at night. You know what? I've that, gotten used to it though. You have? Well, that makes me think of another thing that um, we don't really yeah. care for, but we're getting used to. So this has a tankless hot water heater. And because of that, it has lines that have to stay warm whenever the temperature drops below, I, I th think 40. I think 40 is when it starts to doing that. So whenever it kicks on, it's loud. And it will be in the middle of the night and you hear it, and this whole monitor, this right blue light comes on. So we, when we know it's going to be cold like that, we just open this so we don't have to see the light. So if you're like, I'm a very light sleeper. So any loud noises or any bright lights that just show up, it's going to wake me up. I don't know why. It's not like my eyes are open. So we'll just open this just to cover all these lights right here when that starts kicking on. And this is a Four Seasons camper. So the rest of the walls are insulated. The windows are insulated. The hot water heater, matter of fact, the hot water heater is outside and there is no insulation. Here it is. It's just a thin metal door. And that's what it looks like. But as long as you keep this on and there's a flame that ignites, I don't really know where I think back there. But if you see, this is the water line. All this has to heat up. You don't have to worry about this freezing if that's all on, but it does get a little annoying whenever it's three o'clock in the morning and you hear loud, mechanical sounds that's one con we don't like and that also leads us into another con about the water tankless hot water heater we do have endless hot water but we but don't have endless water <laughs> we don't have endless water so whenever you take a shower or you're using the sink and you don't have it on high enough it doesn't kick on it has to have a lot of pressure also once it sets off say you're taking a shower you got the hot water going and you use the nozzle up here to prevent the flow of water when you do that, and then you're ready to rinse off, because that's how we shower, is we turn it off, on, off, on, to conserve water. It's cold water coming through the line again until that reignites and heats up. So you're wasting water because you don't want the ice cold water all over you. So we, we've kind of got a system. I'll take the ice cold water and rinse out my hair until it warms up. I usually try to use it to like get soap off the wall. Yeah, I do the same. Shampoo and stuff. But I honestly think we use more water washing dishes than when we shower. I don't know if it's because this is coming out in one huge stream and the other one is kind of like spraying out. I just feel like we use more water when we wash dishes, but we haven't really had an issue with the water since this is our vehicle. If we have to go somewhere, we just fill up with water. Like if we want to go do an activity, hey, let's just go fill up on water. Um, if we want to go to the grocery store, hey, while we're out, let's fill up on water. So that's really not an issue. It's not like a travel trailer where you kind of park it somewhere and you leave it and then you take your truck and you go wherever. We're able to actually just refill and drain our tanks whenever we go into town somewhere. And whenever it comes to doing dishes, I have noticed Kelly has started a new process where she allows a little stream to come out and not using a whole bunch of water. So you've just recently started well, doing Well, I that. think what it was because when we first left Arkansas, we did stay at a lot of campgrounds because there wasn't a lot of public land to camp on. So I got used to being hooked up to water and just letting it run like it was a regular sink in a house. But now that we're out west and we are boondocking more often, I've learned to just let a little trickle stream come down. So that way I do conserve water as I'm washing dishes. And speaking of water, it reminds me of one other thing that we really are happy that we installed was a water filtration system. We have the one that we carried with us prior. It's down here. It's called a survivor filter. As you can see, there it is. So that line comes up here. And that way we have fresh drinking water. We make sure all our water that we put in the tank is potable. So all our water that we put in the 45 gallon water tank is filtered. Then when it comes through here, it's additionally filtered through a bad of the bone water filtration system. And we constantly have fresh water to drink. Mm -hmm. I love water. Another thing when it comes to water, we can talk about piping. So when we first kind of went out and did some things in this camper, we did notice we had some drips under the sink here and in the shower. And some of the pipes were not twisted on all the way. So Cody just had to go in there and re-tighten, even just hand tightening all the pipes. And after we did that here and over there, 
we haven't had any issues with that. And one thing you do want to make sure if you do have a camper and you never check up on your cabinets, if you do have the quick connect screw on connectors, if it cools outside and it gets cold under there, the plastic in that material does shrink and it causes it to back off and it will leak again. So after we already tightened it once, we went through the first cold spell and it leaked again. In that time, it leaked and covered the whole entire area under here. And then we had to dry it all out. We tightened it even more. Now we haven't had a link since, knock on wood. We're good to go. Another thing that we loved about this camper was that we have a TV now. We went like a year and a half without TV. So we use a fire stick. We're not connected to cable or anything like that. The Amazon fire stick. But we did notice that this, when we plugged it in to the back, there's an outlet on the wall and it connect to the batteries in the camper that it run the batteries down. We were only getting two days with deep cycle batteries. We were only gonna get two days before we had to go charge it. So we did end up getting lithium ion batteries. We've only had the lithium ion batteries for two months and that has allowed us to go off grid for at least seven days. The solar panel up top, which came with the camper, it's only 100 watts, does pull in some wattage. So I've noticed we get at least 0.20 extra watts a day if we've got full sun, which just kind of keeps it the voltage in between like 13.8 and 13.40 something, depending, and we can get about seven days. So now we do not plug this into the camper. We plug the TV into a smaller power bank. If we decide we want to watch TV that evening, we will do that. And so that way we don't waste any battery power. We do not use this at all. This is the radio. There's a huge LED light that comes off here and so we just put electrical tape over it because that's just, I don't like lights. <laughs> I don't like lights either. Um, and I also put a little piece here on this button because it was red. This is a power button. Only thing we use is the USB. Um, that's where I charge my cell phone every night. Just don't listen to the radio. We have a JBL audio speaker and we just listen to Pandora on our phones. So to be honest with you, the JBL audio speaker, this little guy sounds better than the mm -hmm. speakers up here. This is speakers. There's two speakers on the outside of the camper. And then back here. Two speakers back there. They sound god awful. Mm -hmm. There's no bass to it. It's all treble. It's really high. Well, you can just buy one of those speakers for 80 bucks, last you forever as long as you don't lose it. Yeah. And it sounds great. So let's move up here into the boudoir. So this is our closet. And when we first had the camper, it just had a hanging bar up here and no shelving. And we just didn't have enough room for all of our clothes. So Cody's dad helped us to build some shelves. We just added two shelves. And there's cedar. Yeah, there's cedar. So it, it smells, our clothes always smell really good. There's also clothes that go down into here. It's pretty deep. There was a hatch that closed right here. We just removed that because as you can see, our clothes are just, they're just right there. These aren't attached. You can remove them and lift them up if you want to, but we haven't, we haven't had to do that. So all of our clothes fit in here just fine. Now the bed, the mattress that came with this camper was a six inch thick firm queen mattress. Quickly, we realized about two months after sleeping on that, that it was way too firm. We do like firm mattresses, but not that firm. So we ended up going with a Lucid eight inch memory foam cooling gel mattress. And it is very comfortable. We thought, we didn't know if eight inch was going to be too tall, but it's really not. It didn't make much of a difference. So we are happy with the Lucid eight inch memory foam mattress and it fits perfectly. It's still a queen. Uh, all that works out great. But there is one love-hate relationship we have with this camper right now, this window. We love this window, because I mean, look at the view. Ignore the dead bugs or the crack that occurred because a rock flung up and hit it. We love the view, we love the sun coming in. It really opens up the space, but we also hate it because it's not insulated. So we always have to keep this closed in cold weather or it makes the whole camper cold. And then whenever it's hot, it makes the whole camper hot. Right now it feels great. Because mm -hmm, it's a little, little chilly outside. So the sun coming in here, it heats up the camper. So it's perfect for that. This window and the window in the door are not insulated. All the other windows are insulated. The last thing I wanted to talk about up here is all these electrical outlets. So on each side of our bed, we have two USB outlets and two 110 volt outlets. On my side, 
I put a huge sticker around it because there's a green light that just, there's a green light that just comes out and it's so bright at night. Well, I don't use the USB on my side. I don't know if yours does this, but when I plug a USB into it, it kind of makes this noise. So I do not use the outlet at all. I don't know why it's making that noise. Maybe it's not safe to use. I don't think I've, we've charged some stuff back here. But usually we charge whenever we're down here, we're not when we're not sleeping. Sleep. Mine makes the same noise. All the rest of the USB and the 110 volt doesn't make it sound, but for some reason, even the 110 volt right here, whenever I plug my <laughs> laptop in when we're on shore power, it makes a sound. That's just something else that we don't care for. And I'm just kind of confused as to why all the plugs are up here. I'm like, hello, they need to be down here where we're doing stuff and we plug things in. But that's, you know, that's okay. Take it or leave it. Last thing we can talk about that was original to the camper that we removed was the carpet. There was a little bit of carpet here, and then there was carpet at the front door. Anything, anywhere where you see this wood, we replaced it. The carpet was here. We replaced this whole thing with wood, which is the same thing this board is made out of. We just really didn't like the carpet. It would just hold a lot of smell. Even though this camper is a 2022 and we were the first owners of it, it just still hold, it held smell, and of course it held hair and dirt and everything else, especially by the front door. I knew that was gonna be an issue when it rained and it got muddy. So we replaced that by the front door first. Really liked that. So then on Christmas, we came back and we decided we wanted to replace this piece with the wood. And so far it's worked out great. We're not missing the carpet. What else is nice is up here when we replaced this one, we gained more storage. Ooh. Fresh water tank, DeWalt power tools and a green umbrella we have an umbrella i forgot about that for the, beach. for the beach i almost forgot to talk about how awesome it is having the truck camper on the truck at all times you can take it off but we choose to leave it on because we never know if we're going to come back to the area we're located at an example of what i'm talking about is we went into phoenix which is about two hours from where we're at right now maybe an hour and a half while there we still didn't know where we were going to camp but we were able to get all our errands done and kelly and i wanted to go out to dinner we were dirty and nasty. All we did was park in a restaurant that we wanted to eat at, walk in here, shower, put on some clean clothes, and walk right into the restaurant. And after that, we just went out to the middle of nowhere in BLM land, don't even remember where it was, and just slept for the night. That pretty much concludes our review on our setup. And this is a, I'll just repeat it because I don't think we said what the camper was. It is a 2017 Ford F350 diesel, 6.7 liter engine. And this is the Palomino HS2901, 2022 model. And I'm completely happy with it. After all the modifications and changes we've done to kind of suit our lifestyle. It was a great choice. Kelly did a great job because she's the one who did all the research on it. I was busy. <laughs> you were driving. I was driving back from New York. <laughs> if you would like to see a complete detailed tour of this camper, we did one when we first purchased it. We'll put the link in the description below. However, we'll catch you on the other. See you on the next one.